Hey everyone, so, uh, so far we've talked about the data science process and uh, central to that process is the idea of creating mathematical or machine learning models. So now I want to talk about how do we know if those models are good? Are they precise or accurate? Um, well, for each model that we investigate uh, throughout the remainder of the class, we're going to be talking about how to know if that model is good or not. But I want to give you some uh, very early on intuition on how we can tell if a model is good and how we're going to, um, how, what our process is going to be. It's quite a bit different than the typical statistical validation process. And um, I want to again call out that to be sure that you read that uh, the statistical modeling paper, the, the Tale of Two Cultures by uh, Bremen. Um, this will make a lot more sense if you read that. All right. So if you remember from before, we said that we have some data, and I'm now going to call that data X. And um, we have a process that we can't probably know because it's very complicated. I'm going to call it nature. We're going to consider it a black box. And from that black box comes whatever we want to get out of our model. Let's assume we're doing um, supervised learning for now. Um, and so we'll call that y. And this is our dependent variable, whereas x is our independent variables. All right. So, and if you remember, our goal with all of this was to create some model that approximates nature such that when we get in, we put in x, we get out some value. Now, how good our model is, um, is, going to, is going to be determined by how close we are to uh, the natural model. Obviously, the ideal situation, perfect, would be for our model to be completely the same as nature. It's probably not going to happen. There's always going to be some error. So what I'm going to do um, to differentiate the two is when I put x into our model, I'm going to instead say that the outcome, the dependent variable, the prediction is instead of y, it's going to be y hat. Um, okay, so how good is our model is a, is a question that we can answer by comparing y to y hat. How close they are or far apart is going to be uh, how we determine uh, how good our model is. So. That sounds easy enough. Um, so the, the problem is our model isn't very useful if we only ever use it to predict values that are within x. Um, uh, that is the, the training data, the things that we have seen in history. Um, we want a model to be able to generalize so that can, it can make predictions on um, scenarios it's never seen before. A good model has to generalize. So what we can do, or what we should do, to know if our model is good, is when we have our training data, and I'll take, let's say x is all the historical data, what I'll do is I will take 80%, and that's about customary, but it depends. Um, I'll take 80% of x, And I'll call that now train. And then I'll take 20% of x. And I'm going to now call that test. Now, when I use my historical data to train my model, and I know that we haven't really talked a whole lot about what that means, but um, you can probably assume that it's uh, what we mean is we're going to show the computer all of this data and it's going to learn some rule um, that, will, uh, that will create that approximate model to nature. Okay, so if we um, use our training data, what we can do then is um, we'll take this test data and we'll hold this out. So we take 20% of the original data, we'll hold it out, we'll put it away. It's over here. We'll show the computer the training data but not the test data. And then, once the computer has learned some general rule using only the training data, we can use the test data. 
Now, if you remember, the test data is a 20% holdout of what's happened historically. So that means we know the uh, outcome of the dependent variable. So we know why for this data. So we know this. because it's happened. So what we can do is if we put test into this box, we know the whys. So what we can do uh, to test our model is to take the same test set of data and send it into our model. and then we will record the Y hats. Now keep in mind, we've split this out before training, so that means that the computer has never seen this, this set of data. So when we compare Y hat to Y for a set of data that the computer has never seen before, we can be um, reasonably sure that that's a good measurement of uh, the computer's performance in its model versus the natural process. So this is called a holdout, and this is the simplest kind of validation that we'll talk about. We'll eventually talk about cross-validation as well. Um, but for now, I think it's really important to understand that all we're doing to validate our models is to take the historical data, we take 80% of it and we use that to train the algorithm. And then we take 20% of it and we use that to test the algorithm. So once training is complete, we show test to the model and we, we get our y hat, our predicted variable, and we compare y hat to y. And that's going to show us um, how accurate our model is, how precise our model is, what the performance is. All right, thanks a lot.